Dr. Parsa Saleh here. Today we're going to be talking about the layers of the face. Understanding the layers of the face is super important, not only for foundational knowledge as a medical student, but even as a resident. And this extends for plastic surgeons, facial plastic surgeons, um, head and neck surgeons, anyone who's really working on the face, you know, uh, craniofacial, but even the non-surgeons like dermatologists, anyone who's doing Botox, fillers, any non-invasive treatments of the face, understanding the layers of the face is super important. So the foundational thing we'll focus on today is the SMAS, which is stands for the superficial musculoaponeurotic system, superficial muscular aponeurotic system. Um, and, you know, we'll probably have other videos on this, but today we'll kind of do an overview because understanding this SMAS system and where it is in the face, it's basically foundational for not only surgeries, anatomy, but also injections. So you probably hear a lot about the SMAS, at least in my field in plastic surgery, you hear a lot about it with the deep plane facelift. And the reason it's important is because the SMAS envelops, you know, the muscles, the musculoaponeurotic system. And when you restore it in the right vector, it goes over a very natural, anatomically normal glide plane. And that's when you get the natural results of a facelift. And, um, you know, people are always worried about with when they get facelifts, things of that sort, that they get the pulled, you know, windswept look. Well, with the deep plane, a really proper deep plane facelift where you release the appropriate right, uh, ligaments, you're in the right plane, you really get a natural look. And if you look at the outcomes, I think at this point it's not contested. You know, you look at someone like Dr. Ben Talley or Andrew Giacono, um, who have extensively published on the deep plane facelift, you really see that the results are better, you know. So let's just review the anatomy this time and we can have a facelift talk later. So the anatomy. In the neck, so the SMAS is basically in the face. Um, you know, the mid face, it's controversial if it's in the lip or not, but there is a layer that's similar that works like the SMAS in there. When you do a, a deep plane lip lift, you can see that. Um, and then up here in the temples, the SMAS becomes the tempo, temporoparietal fascia. In the scalp, it becomes the galea, and in the neck, it becomes the platysma. And that's something that's confusing to a lot of students and residents and even surgeons and even honestly practicing doctors aren't familiar with this concept. So understanding what the SMAS is and where it is in the face, that's important. The best way to think about it, it's, it's a continuous layer that completely envelops the scalp, the head, the face, and even the neck. So in the neck, it's pretty easy. You know, you get the skin, subcutaneous tissue, then you're at the platysma. And then, you know, after the platysma, you go into the, you know, the fat and the lymph nodes and, you know, you have the deep cervical fascia enveloping the larynx, things like that. In the mid face, you have, it's just the SMAS and it envelops all these muscles, the zygomaticus major, the minor, it envelops the muscular aponeurotic system. That's why it's called the SMAS. Um, and it's important because you know that in a deep plane facelift, if you're in the plane between the SMAS and the superficial layer of the deep cervical fascia, the nerve is protected because all the nerves, except for three of them, and maybe we'll do a little um, anatomy review on that later, but except for three of them are innervated from their undersurface. So you know that if you're above the SMAS, you're completely safe. Just like in the neck, when you're doing any sort of neck lift or neck surgery or neck dissection, um, you know that you're safe above the platysma. Same thing in the face. If you're above, above the SMAS, you're safe. When you go under the SMAS, if you understand the anatomy, you're still safe. You just have to make sure you're in the right plane. And it's a very natural, anatomically normal glide plane. Um, for people who've had a lot of fillers, uh, ultra, uh, basically radio-based energy therapies, um, thread lifts, things like that, you can get scarring in that layer. But even if someone had a deep plane facelift in the past, that layer shouldn't be scarred up. So anatomically, it's a normal layer. So to summarize, neck, platysma, Face, SMAS. Then, when you get outside of the face, the SMAS kind of fuses here with the parotid masoteric fascia, the parotid masoteric fascia. That's that layer you stay above during a parotidectomy. And then in the temporal area, the SMAS is continuous with the temporoparietal fascia. And I did have a post about this a few weeks ago on my X account, but the this is often confusing for novice surgeons or uh, for medical students. The, tempo, the temporoparietal fascia, the TPF, 
that is continuous with the spaz, but it's also sometimes called the superficial temporal fascia. So TPF and superficial temporal fascia are um, analogous. They're not analogous. They're uh, identical terms. They're synonyms. Then below that, right below the TPF, that's where you have the frontal branch of the facial nerve. Um, the, the deeper layer of fascia in the temporal region, the temporal region, so that's, I'm biting down so you can see my temporal, temporalis muscle, um, the deeper fascia layer, the deep temporal fascia, uh, or the temporalis fascia. So the deep temporal fascia is synonymous with the temporalis fascia. And then, this is important for injectors, the deep temporal fascia splits into its own superficial and deep layers where it surrounds the temporal fat pad. Um, and again, when you're injecting anything, injecting fat or filler, you want to go into where the fat naturally is. That's when you're doing anything in surgery, non-invasive, invasive, whatever it is, when you rejuvenate, you want to restore the anatomy, right? So it doesn't make sense to be injecting fat where there's no fat normally, so, or filler. So you want to be injecting in that layer. So anyway, summary, platysma, spaz, I guess you could say proto-masoteric fascia when you're really lateral over here, TPF or superficial temporal fascia, they are synonyms. And then over here is your frontalis muscle. That's this muscle, often people Botox it. And then posterior to it, that's your galia. So to summarize this video, the SMAS, the superficial muscular aponeurotic system, very important, very important in deep plane uh, facelifts, but also it's just really important thing to understand as uh, from an anatomy perspective, but also from a non-invasive facial rejuvenation perspective. So you have the platysma, the smas, protomasteric fascia, TPF or temporoparietal fascia, also known as the superficial temporal fascia, then the galia, which is coming off the frontalis muscle. And if you think of the face as this one envelope of that whole smas system, that gives you a good understanding of the layers. And actually, little bonus content. Um, I'm just pulling it up here. So there's a paper by Jonathan Sykes, Dr. Sykes, uh, from about two, three years ago uh, that was per, um, in one of the facial plastics journals. And it does a really good job. It's actually entitled Superficial and Deep Facial Anatomy and its Implications for Right Didectomy. So I would recommend anyone who's interested to really check that out. But there's a really good way of breaking down the layers of the entire face into five different layers, the skin, the subcutaneous superficial areolar tissue, the superficial fascia, the loose areolar tissue, and the deep fascia. So it's just a good way to kind of think of all the fascia in the face. Um, I would recommend checking it out. And he actually has a really nice photo at the end where it shows the ligaments of the face. And again, this is important for right didectomy. You know, you have the mandibular ligament uh, about right here, zygomatic uh, cutaneous ligament here, and there's, you know, a temporal adhesion line up here uh, near the conjoint tendon. So really important when you're doing a deep plane rhytidectomy to release the zygomatic cutaneous ligament. A lot of people, uh, some will advocate to release the mandibular ligament as well. Again, as described by Dr. Bentele, uh, you don't necessarily need to actually release the mandibular ligament. Uh, sometimes that can be tricky um, and not really, sometimes that can be unnecessary and often it is unnecessary, but you definitely do need to release the zygomatic cutaneous ligament to get a true deep plane facelift and bring everything naturally vertically up. Um, mandibular, not so much, but we can do another video on that as well. In the office right now, Destiny's Child is playing. Please say that.